Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Yuva, and today we're going to get some insight into tennis at the college level. My guest today is C.J. Weber. He is the head men's tennis coach at Florida Gulf Coast University, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Anthony. Sure. So, uh, C.J., usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So, where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Eastern Illinois. It was a, uh, it was a small Division I school. Um, kind of uh, about 45 minutes away from where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in a small farm town in, in Illinois. And, um, and yeah, it was a great school. Uh, you know, we, we have some notable alums from, from Eastern Illinois, most recently Tony Romo. And uh, so, so me and him were one year apart. And so, uh, so it's kind of, a, kind of a fun fact to, to let people know about. <laughs> great. So let's go back in time a little bit before we get started into tennis. Um, when you were in high school, when did you start thinking about college? Was it freshman year of high school, senior year? When did it all start for you? Well, for me, I started thinking about it even as early as junior high. Um, you know, I think here in the United States, you kind of grow up knowing that college athletics exists and and it ends up being a, being a goal of a lot of uh, young young players and things like that. So, uh, so as early as I can remember, I always wanted to play division one tennis. Um, but, uh, but to really start thinking about it, uh, probably my junior year in high school, which, uh, for, for a lot of people is a little late. Um, but, uh, but I don't think it was too late. So now, uh, Eastern Illinois, uh, was it the only school that was recruiting you or did you have multiple schools? No, I reached out to, shoot, I probably reached out to 50 schools, uh, probably had a, a similar number reach out to me first uh, from all different, uh, from all different levels, um, you know, from, from, you know, for, for me and my level being, being recruited as kind of a walk on it at, uh, at some of the more premier programs in the country to, you know, all the way down to junior college, I, I had coaches, um, reach out to me and and just gauge gauge my interest level and and I sent out letters to you know coaches all over the country various uh, divisions um, but I mean ultimately I knew that I I wanted to play division one um, but uh, and and fortunately I got that opportunity but there's there's a lot of opportunities out there for everybody great so now you're at Easton Illinois uh, you're playing tennis there I'm assuming how's the school like what's it like I loved it. I mean, my time at Eastern Illinois was just, uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I learned a lot. I, you know, I, I grew as a young man. I learned a lot of my foundational, you know, professional, um, I don't know, principles, characteristics, things like that. Um, you know, it's very, it's very interesting. In a month, I'm going to be inducted into the school's Hall of Fame. Wow. And so in, uh, in four weeks, I get to go back and kind of relive some of those memories that I had from there. And, um, and I'm just looking forward to that so much. I don't get to go back to Eastern Illinois very often, being here in Florida now. And uh, I just had a great time. It ended up being, being a perfect fit for me. Um, I, I played high in the lineup. I got a good scholarship and, and both of those things were really important to me in, in looking for a university. And, and so, you know, I had great coaches, great professors and, and it was just, it, I didn't know it when I picked it, but I, I think it was the perfect fit for me. Great. So now you graduate from East Illinois. Uh, how does one go from graduating there to becoming the head men's tennis coach at uh, Florida Gulf Coast? Well, depending on how long-winded you want me to be, uh, I'll, uh, 
you know, I could talk about a lot of different details, but <laughs> I mean, out of college, I was kind of hoping to play a little bit professionally, but didn't quite have the financial backing. And I had, um, I had a really good opportunity to get involved and, in, um, at the University of Illinois program, uh, the head coach there offered me a volunteer position to where um, I was like, you know, if I uh, basically in my senior year in college, I, I decided that I wanted to coach. I mean, I, I kind of didn't feel like I had the level to really make it as a pro. So I kind of made that decision and then uh, started reaching out to various coaches. And, and the Illinois coach really took me under his wing and, uh, and offered me a spot there as a volunteer to work there for one year. And that just completely blew up my tennis world. Uh, I met so many coaches in five months. I traveled all over the country. And, um, and from there, I was able to land a full-time position at University of Miami as the assistant coach there. That's what brought me to Florida. I obviously fell in love with Florida. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't go wrong being, being <laughs> in the state of Florida coaching tennis. Uh, and, uh, so kind of wanted to stay down here after five years at, uh, University of Miami, the head coaching job opened up at FGCU and, and I've been here now entering my eighth year and wow. can't, can't believe it. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. So let's get into the tennis, uh, aspect of the show. Um, so how do we get started with tennis? What, what does a student athlete in high school have to do to, to go on to college to play tennis? Well, that's a very, uh, that's a very broad question, to be honest. But, um, you know, you, I think that it would be the same in any sport that you have to get exposure to uh, college coaches. So in a sport like tennis, um, you know, you have to play a lot of tournaments. You have to find out which tournaments uh, college coaches are interested in watching, which tournaments are highly attended by college coaches. So you can get exposure uh, from, from, you know, from that regard. Um, you know, so, I mean, at a foundational level, I mean, that's that's the minimum that you need to do. I mean, not even talking about all the all the hard work and the numbers of hours that you need to play and the commitment and, you know, at, at the division one level in tennis, um, you know, what any recruit would have to know on the tennis side is that tennis is a global sport and coaches are recruiting players from all over the world with, uh, with all different kinds of backgrounds and many, many players with, uh, you know, with high level professional background. Uh, who who are still trying to decide if they should turn pro or or um, or go to college? So you know, e even the United States is a very small piece of of what college tennis has to has to offer. Just uh, you know, from from a recruiting standpoint. So um, so I mean, to play at the Division One level, I mean, you have to you have to be a very finely tuned uh, tennis player in order to in order to find a find a place like that. Now, does, uh, does an amateur high school student have to have uh, uh, an amateur ranking in the USTA or anything like that? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessary, but, but it's important. Um, I think rankings and ratings are uh, good indicators of a player's level. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Rankings and ratings are good initial indicators, but uh, but you know nothing is really going to accurately predict a player's you know true level or true potential. But uh, but I would say most college coaches probably start with some type of ranking or rating uh, to to gauge initial interest. Um, I would I would imagine most college coaches have a minimum kind of set requirement that that they're kind of looking for and then after that they they start talking with kids and and figure out if they're a good fit for the, for their institutions now do you recommend that a a high school student uh play on the high school team as well as play in all these tournaments uh, outside the school i think for for every player it's a little different um you know at the high school level um you know, most most really good tennis players are traveling around 
uh, either their states or countries playing their national tournaments in the United States here, playing USDA tournaments, playing ITF tournaments, you know, international tournaments. Uh, most really good players are going to be playing those types of tournaments. I would never discourage somebody from playing high school tennis, uh, almost no matter what level they are, um, simply because I think high school is a great time to kind of learn how to be a part of a team. Uh, which is an invaluable characteristic that that can't be measured. Uh, I don't think it's going to determine where you go to school or anything, but it'll probably give you a little bit of a head start in terms of, you know, with tennis being an individual sport, you're not you're not used to being on a team. So, um, so in high school, you know, if you have that opportunity to be a part of a team, I think that's a that's a plus, you know. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, a tennis player really has to make sure that they get outside of the high school tennis world also and and definitely play a lot of USTA tournaments, you know, if you have the financial backing, play some international tournaments, things like that. So now, how about uh, grades and skills? Uh, do, you, do you see that uh, high school students need to have uh, A-plus uh, grades or, or can a B student get into college for, uh, and play tennis? Uh, and what type of skills do you need? Do you need them to be really fast? Does does uh, do they have to have a certain uh, speed on their on their serve? Uh, give us some uh, examples of of uh, what they need to to go on to college. Well, uh, from a from a grade standpoint, uh, here at FGCU, I just want uh, my players to be able to get in school uh, on on their own uh, to be able to get through admissions. And uh, and meet the minimum requirements of the of the university, which there are some sliding scale things. So it's kind of even difficult to say exactly what every student, you know, needs to get into school here. But um, but I mean, for me, you know, coaching coaching at the Division One level, I mean, it's uh, you know, grades are grades are extremely important, and I want my I want all of my players to to graduate with a good degree and. And and study hard, but um, but I also want to compete at the highest level in the country, and so um, so there's there's no getting around the the fact that uh, a tennis level is is you know is probably the most important thing that uh, that comes into you know who I recruit, and you know in addition to that, I would I would say for me it would be tennis level, and even above grades would be character. Um, character, you know, is it a good fit for me, a good personality fit, uh, for me, because I think that, uh, if it's a good fit for, for me as a coach to work with a player, uh, then, then I can teach that player how to be successful in school. I can teach that person how to be successful at university, both academically, athletically, and socially. So now a student athlete comes to Florida Gulf Coast, um, what can they expect? Give me a whole year's worth of what the student goes through. Do they get to school in August? Do they come in September? Uh, do they have break at Christmas time? Give me a whole year's worth of practice, games. What what, what happens? Yeah, well, um, it's a it's a one hundred percent commitment to the sport uh, here at Florida Gulf Coast. Certainly, if you're in school, you know you're you're doing something to, to train your body or to train your game to, to improve your level in tennis and, and also um, you know, staying committed in the classroom and, and doing all of the things that it takes to be a successful student here at FGCU. I mean, it's a, it's a full-time thing. I mean, mo most of the guys on the team, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of international players on the team and and they they have very limited free time um, because they they have to spend a little bit more time studying than maybe uh, somebody who who has English as their first language, um, but uh, but yeah I mean basically in the you know if if school is in session I mean they're they're committing about half of their day to tennis and half of their day to to academics. So now do they get to school in early August? Is that when school starts? It's about middle. It's about middle of August, and then they'll they'll stay until about middle of December, and then they come back early uh, January, uh, about first or second week in January, 
And then that semester will go until um, beginning of May. Got gotcha. and, and And then some, some students, some students also take summer classes. Uh, I don't mandate that uh, at Florida Gulf Coast, but uh, but a student can decide to take summer classes and and train at the university over the you know uh, you know over the summer as well. But <coughs> but that's a, that's a completely optional thing. Now in the in the fall semester, uh, do you have any matches? Is there practice? Anything like that? Yeah, our fall is uh, is very individual focused. Uh, we focus on uh, it's it's very similar to what a tennis player would be used to growing up in the sport. We play about four or five different tournaments throughout the fall. It's all individual based, uh, all individual results. Um, you know, the the training is still full time. We you know the NCAA limits how you know, how many days we can practice Correct. in the fall compared to the spring. So normally we have about uh, 95 days in the spring where we're full on and about 50 days in the in the fall uh, where we're full on. So it's a little bit shorter, but uh, but most of the players are pretty committed to, to what they're doing and they'll they'll practice extra on their own and um, and things like that. But the fall is very individual focused. And the and the spring is our championship season, and that's where it's all team focused. So now they come back in January, and h how's the schedule work in January? Is there a lot more tournaments? Is there a lot more uh, uh, training that goes on? Um, I, the training is very similar. It's a little bit more training in the in the spring, more more consistent, I would say, from the start of January to the end to the beginning of May. Um, but uh, there's, there's, you know, probably a few more matches. Um, we play, we play usually around 20 dual matches uh, per spring season. So, um, so I mean, most most of their weekends are um, are committed to playing playing dual matches. You know, we don't we don't play tournaments in the spring. Um, it's mostly just head to head dual matches, you know, FGCU against another school. Gotcha. So now when in, in the springtime, uh, is there NCAA championships at the end? Do, do they do something? Yes. What, what happens yeah. then? Uh, in tennis, it works basically exactly like basketball, like March Madness and basketball. Um, if you, if you, at the division one level, if you win your conference, no matter what conference you're in, you automatically get into the NCAA tournament. And then after that, they typically have around 40 to 45 at large bids to where they have a committee that selects, you know, what's supposed to be the, the top 45 schools in the country that did not win their conference tournament title. <coughs> so, I mean, that that's pretty much how it works in, in basketball. It's the, it's the same in tennis. Gotcha. So now, the advantage, I guess, in Florida is that you get to actually play tennis in January compared to the northern schools. Right. Well, uh, the northern schools, uh, they, you know, with with budgets getting bigger at universities and things like that, a lot of uh, schools up north have indoor facilities, so they they can still practice and train uh, that time of year. But uh, but we get to play the real sport, <laughs> uh, which is outdoors, um, and. Uh, you know, so so for us, there's no adjustment period from going indoors to outdoors. You know, the main championship part of the season is played outdoors. So the struggle that a lot of indoor teams have is is that transition. You know, they play two months of indoor tennis and then, you know, and then they, you know, the game is different, especially at a high level. Uh, the game is different indoors than outdoors. So uh, so there's a transition period. And I think a, a lot of northern schools kind of struggle with that transition a little bit to to get it to convert into NCAA wins. So now, uh, academic wise, um, what do you do to help the students academically at the school? Is there tutors that they can that uh, they can get? Uh, is there extra time in classes? How how does it work at at Florida Gulf Coast? Yeah, at FGCU, it's very impressive what uh, what we're able to do here, and I'm very proud of our academic support staff. Uh, our our head um, director of academics here is unbelievable, and 
does a great job of putting the students first and and making sure that they have access to the resources that they need in order to be successful. So um, pretty much any class that you're taking here at FGCU, there's going to be a tutor available if you if you do need a tutor for for our student athletes anyway. All of that is provided uh, to the students from the athletic department, so they don't have to worry about paying for it or anything like that. They just uh, they just make sure that you know they're organized and and they schedule the those meetings and and things like that, and they can get all the help that they want uh, in terms of um, you know tutors for specific classes. They also have academic advisors that make sure that they're on track to graduate on time, that they're taking the correct classes. Um, we have a beautiful new um, academic support center that uh, is only a year old and it has individual tutor rooms. It's got a huge computer lab, a, a big conference room, a couple offices, and and uh, it's just really, really state of the art. I, you know, I don't think there's another university that has as nice of an academic uh, center as we have here at FGCU. We're very lucky. Now, uh, how about uh, scholarships at the Division I level uh, schools? Is there a lot of scholarships that tennis has? Is there none? Is there money? How does that work? Yeah, um, well, on the men's side, there's, there's not quite as much money as there is on the women's side. Uh, on the men's side, at the Division I level, you're limited to four and a half uh, full scholarships. So a coach can take that four and a half scholarships. And typically, you know, here at FGCU, I've, I typically have nine or 10 guys on the team. So I take those four and a half scholarships and I spread them out. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cold, so I, uh, <laughs> no I apologize. But, um, but yeah, I take that four and a half scholarships and, and, I, and I kind of spread them out amongst the team. And, um, you know, a lot of factors go into determining what type of scholarship a kid, you know, an individual gets, but, um, but I mean, I, on the men's side, there's, there's actually very few opportunities to, to get a, a true full ride, I would say. Um, but, um, but there's definitely help out there. I mean, you, you have four and a half scholarships to spread out amongst nine or 10 guys. Now, uh, Give me some of the schools that that uh, Florida Gulf Coast plays against, uh, just to give them a, a sense of who you're playing. You know what type of schools you're playing. I mean, we we compete against everybody. I mean, anybody who's willing to to play me, I'm going to play. Um, I've never turned down a match from anybody. So, um, you know, we've uh, we've made the NCAA tournament twice, where we played University of Florida one year, we played U UCLA one year. <clears throat> um, we played Florida State a lot um, this year. We're playing, uh, you know, other notable schools like Penn State. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Get some water. Um, but um, but yeah. So we'll we'll play we'll play anybody from from the top schools in the country to uh, within our conference. Uh, we have. Uh, a bunch of schools that are very similar in size to FGCU, so that's the that's the majority of our schedule. Um, but uh, but we only play Division One competition, and um, and yeah, it ranges from some of the best in the country to you know, I don't know, any, anywhere in the in the average range for so, Division One. And where do you where do you actually recruit? Where where are the hotbeds in the United States and around the world? Well, um, I recruit a lot. I mean, right now my team is almost all international. Um, that's not uh, that's that's not from a um, specific design. Um, you know, that's just uh, that's been where uh, where most of the players uh, where I've gotten interest from and uh, and where I've been able to to get the the better players from. So, um, but, uh, but throughout my seven years here, I mean, I've coached a lot of players from Florida. I mean, most of the American guys that, that come here are from, are from the state of Florida, but I have gotten a couple, uh, from out of state as well. Um, you know, I'm, 
I'm willing to recruit anybody from anywhere. I don't, uh, I, I don't have any biases towards any, any state, any culture or, or any language or, or anything like that. So, uh, if you, if you show me that, that you're a really good tennis player and committed to the sport and, and I believe in your character and integrity, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to open up a spot for you here at FGCU. Great. So we're coming to the end of our show, uh, and usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the students that want to go to Florida Gulf Coast? What advice do you want to give them? Um, I mean, to if they if they want to come to Florida Gulf Coast to play tennis? Yeah. Or, okay. Um, I mean, I would say work really, really hard. I mean, if, uh, if tennis is your passion, um, you know, go out and go after it. I mean, uh, there's, a, I think a lot of people's passions throughout junior high and high school kind of get squelched a little bit. And, and if you, if you really enjoy the game of tennis, I mean, you should play it as, as often as you possibly can. I mean, play four or five, six hours a day and, and just, you know, expose yourself to all different kinds of levels of the game um, enjoy the process. Um, you know, the recruiting process in general can be very long and very tedious for a lot of student athletes, but, uh, but just kind of take your time, take your breathers and, uh, and sit back and, and realize that it's, you know, it's all just part of the journey. And, and, uh, you know, there is a school out there for, for everyone. If, you know, there's a lot of players that have wanted to come to Florida Gulf Coast that, uh, that have not been able to to make the cut, uh, but I would still encourage those players. Um, I would still encourage those players to to find a school that is that is the right fit, and and if you do, you are going to love college tennis. It is the it's the absolute best thing in the world. It's the best part of a tennis player's career, and um, and yeah, I would I would want everybody to experience that. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much, Anthony. And you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.